looking after the world and looking after other people is something that Christians are called to do, and it's really important. So it's good to help in all sorts of different ways. I wonder if any of you feel really brave. You see, at this point, they're all going, what's he going to ask me to do? <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to do anything. Just I want to know, do you, have you ever felt brave? Do you feel brave today, or have you ever felt brave in the past? Yes. One, two, yes. Oh, it's all the young ones. Uh, see? Oh, the adults. Thank you, David. <laughs> so, yes, there have been times in our lives when we have felt brave. Jesus had friends, 12 in particular, that he spent time with. I'm going to tell you a story this morning. Some of you have seen and heard it before, so just bear with me. It's because I really want to think about the next bit of the story. But that only makes sense if you've got the first bit. So here's a story, and it's about one of Jesus' friends. And this friend just thought he was it. He thought he was incredibly brave. And his name is Peter. Let's call him Brave Peter just for fun. Now, you can tell that Peter is brave, hopefully, because he has a tattoo. Hopefully. Hey, Peter has a tattoo. Woo. Now, this is not just one of those kind of tattoos, you know, that you buy at the shop that you can stick on and then wash off. No, no, no. This is a proper tattoo. So he must be brave. These are chickens. Chickens, you'll notice, don't have tattoos. Um, Peter was a fisherman. He sailed through storms, the big waves coming over the boat and all, because he was brave. He caught huge fish and hauled them over the edge, not worrying that he might, and the wave get thrown overboard. No, because he was brave. Peter was really brave. He was a great fisherman. Chickens, however, don't have dangerous jobs. They just don't. Have you ever heard, for example, of a fisher chicken? No, because chickens don't fish. They don't have dangerous jobs. The hen's job is to lay eggs. The rooster's job is to wake everybody up in the morning with a huge cock-a-doodle-doo. So Peter's real name was Simon. Simon's quite a nice name, you know, it's okay. His friends called him Peter because Peter means rock or strong. That's a, that's a much braver name, isn't it? Hey, I'm the rock, do you know? Brave, brave name, better being Peter than Simon. So Peter must be brave. Chickens, they don't quite have brave names. They, they're more like speckle or chucky chook. And with, you know, all due regard to the chicken, chucky chook, not really a brave name. So maybe you're thinking Peter was always brave. He's never been scared and he's definitely not chicken. And maybe you think you could never be brave like Peter. Well, this story will tell you something about Peter. It was the very last dinner time that Jesus sat down with his friends and he said, tonight I'm going to be arrested and all of you are going to run away. John said, I'll never run away. James said, I'll stick with you right to the very end. 
And Peter said, I'll die for you. Peter said, Jesus, before the rooster crows, you will deny that you are my friend, not once, not twice, but three times. Never, cried Peter. I'm brave and strong. I'm not scared and I'm definitely not a chicken. Well, later that night, they were in the garden and they were praying. And they all fell asleep. I don't know if you've ever put your head down in your pillow at night and thought, I'll just say a wee prayer. And you never get to the end because you're sleeping. Well, that's what they did. But then soldiers came and arrested Jesus. John ran away. James ran away. What about Peter? Well, Peter was brave. He took out his sword and slash. He cut off somebody's ear. And then he ran away. The soldiers took Jesus to the house of the high priest. But Peter found a little bit of courage. He wasn't too chicken. And he began to follow after them. Halt! Who goes there? Asked the little girl guarding the gate. Are you a follower of Jesus? No, 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 said Peter. Jesus is not my friend. Then once they got inside, Peter joined a group that was huddled around the fire because it was cold. <laughs> Something smells fishy. Are you one of those fishermen who followed Jesus? No, no, said Peter. Never been fishing in my life, no. Jesus is not my friend. Didn't I see you in the garden with a sword? You're a follower of Jesus. No, 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 said Peter. Jesus isn't my friend. And just then, at that moment, the rooster crowed cock a doodle doo. And Jesus looked straight at his friend Peter. And Peter ran out of the gate and he cried and he cried and he cried. What a sad story. So, did Peter ever change from being chicken to something else? We all find out. Dun, 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 dun. So, during that story, at different times, Peter would have felt different things. Tell me some of the things that you think Peter might have felt. What do you think? Yeah, he felt really brave. He felt like he could never be scared. Absolutely. Anything else? Felt remorse at the end, yeah. Uh huh. Anything else? Felt scared. He did. Absolutely. Of course he did. Anything else? Nervous. Nervous. Ah, yeah. Wondering what was going to happen next. He had loads of emotions, I think. I think when he said, I'll follow you, even if it means that I have to die, I think he probably meant it. So he was probably really hurt when Jesus said, uh uh. He would be confused. He would feel guilty, maybe, and upset. I would like you to do some Peter faces with me. Right? Some Peter faces. Let's see, and, and I'll look and see who's doing the best ones. Right? Peter faces. So let's do 
Peter wanted to feel brave, so show me some brave faces. Brave. Brave faces. Good. See? Good brave faces. Brave faces. Excellent. Good. So, what about hurt faces? Somebody's done something and you're sad and you're upset about it. What about hurt face? I see. Yeah, that's good. Very good. Excellent. So, what about surprise? Brilliant. See? Excellent. The leaders are allowed to join in too, by the way. I'm just letting you know. Just, just, just for your interest. Okay. So, when Jesus was standing by the fire and the cock had crowed, and Jesus turned in everything that was happening, all the noise and all the people and everything, and Jesus turned and looked straight at him because he knew what had happened. I think Peter must have been absolutely gutted. So show me your gutted face. You're really, really disappointed in yourself. Yeah. Where do you think the best place to have your breakfast is? At home, McDonald's. <laughs> Other fast food establishments are available. But yeah, you know, when uh, some of us went out to Arizona, um, whenever that was, a couple of years ago, and folk over there, they go out for breakfast. That's just one of the things they do. And it's great to be able to go. They go to the Good Egg and places like that, or McDonald's. And, uh, I, I hope. So, what about by the lake? At the shore. Nice place for breakfast. No, yeah, no, maybe. Not really sure. Okay, well, let's just go over the story. Um, at the last, at the end of the last story, just to, to remind us, Peter felt sad. He felt that he had let Jesus and everybody else down, and he was really unhappy. So here, once I find it, is the next installment of the story. Okay. Peter sat on the beach and he watched the sun set. He thought about how he had run away and left his friend Jesus and Peter felt ashamed. He thought about the cross and he felt sad he thought about the empty tomb, and he felt really confused. He said to himself, I might be ashamed, sad, confused, and a bit chicken, but I'm still a fisherman. So Peter gathered his friends, he climbed into the boat, and they headed out to sea. Into the deep water, they threw the nets. And they waited and waited and waited. There were no nibbles, not a nudge on the nets, so they slowly rowed back to the beach. That morning, as the sun rose, a lone fisherman stood on the beach and cast his net. The fisherman dragged his catch ashore. He collected some driftwood. He sparked his flint and he warmed himself by the fire. He cleaned the fish, and he cooked his catch. The lone fisherman stood on the beach and watched a boat row back to shore. Splash. Friends, yelled the fisherman, throw your net on the right-hand side. Well, into the deep water they threw the nets and fish. Not 10, not 100, but 153 enormous fish. It's Jesus, yelled John. It's the Lord. And Peter dived into the water and swam back to the beach. Bring your fish, said Jesus, and let's have some breakfast. After breakfast, 
Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me more than they do? Yes, Lord, replied Peter. You know I'm your friend. Jesus said, Peter, feed my lambs. And then Jesus asked a second time, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, said Peter, you know I'm your friend. And Jesus replied, look after my sheep. Then Jesus asked a third time, Peter, are you my friend? Yes, Lord, said Peter, you know my heart, you know I'm your friend. Peter, said Jesus, feed my sheep. When you were young, you'd get all dressed up and go where you pleased. But when you get old, someone else will dress you up and drag you where you don't want to go. But follow me. But Jesus, said Peter, what about John? Don't worry about John. Peter, my friend, you follow me. And so, Peter the fisherman, who still felt a little bit chicken, stepped forward and again followed his friend, Jesus. Sometimes when we're frightened or we're uncertain, we go back to something that makes us feel better even if we know it's not good for us. Sometimes a teddy bear or a blankie just makes us feel a wee bit more comfortable when we're worried about something or scared. Sometimes people have habits that they go back to, like biting their nails or eating chocolate. Sometimes too much chocolate. Some try to work even harder. We all have ways that we cope when things are difficult and when we're worried or anxious about stuff. And so here's Peter. He felt awful. He was really upset. He was really anxious. He was really worried. And there's a place in the Bible in the second book in the New Testament, Mark, and it's in chapter 16 and verses 6 and 7. It's some women have gone after Jesus had been crucified and he'd been buried in the tomb. Some women went to the tomb. And when they got there, there was a big stone that had been over the entrance to the tomb, and it was moved, it was rolled away, and there was nobody there apart from angels. And they said this to these ladies who went, don't be frightened. You're looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he's risen. He's not here. Look and see the place where they put him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter... He's going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him, just as he told you. Isn't that amazing that Peter would be singled out? Here's this one who felt so bad, maybe so bad that even at that point he was feeling that he wasn't worthy to be called a disciple. A disciple is a word we use for somebody who follows Jesus. And maybe he felt so bad because of what he had done that he thought, I'm not even really worthy to be called that because I let him down. But God said through these ladies and through the angel. Tell them all and Peter. So Peter was to be included in whatever it was that was coming. You see, God had big plans for Peter. And they went back to Galilee. That was where they had come from. And they went back to what they knew because they were fishermen. So they went out on the boat and they felt comfortable because they were happy there. But if you've ever been fishing, you'll know that sometimes you don't ever catch anything. You, you can, if you've got a rod and line and you cast it and you cast it and nothing happens, there's no bites, there's nothing. And it's really frustrating. I remember once being out with a friend and we, they were waiting for rain and the salmon had come up the loch, the sea loch, and there were hundreds of them. And you could see them all swimming about in the water. And we were there and we were, casting nothing 
And eventually my friend got so angry that he couldn't catch one of these salmon that he started wading into the water and he got deeper. And, and the, the fish were swimming between your legs. There were so many of them. And he just ended up thrashing the water with the fishing rod because he couldn't catch anything. He was so annoyed. Well, they'd been out all night and they didn't catch a thing. Here are these people who are supposed to be good at this and they didn't catch anything. And then on their way back, something unexpected happened. Here's somebody on the shore and they don't recognize who it is and he says, throw out your nets, there's fish. I don't know why they did it. Maybe they thought he can see something from the shore that we can't see from here. I don't know, but they threw out and they caught all of these fish, 153 fish. And it says they were big, they were large fish. And it was at that moment that they realized that the person on the shore was Jesus. And Peter was so excited that he just jumped straight into the water and started swimming for the shore. You see, I'm pretty confident that they would have remembered the very first time that Jesus was in one of their boats when they met him at the shore. That's right back at the beginning of the story of Jesus. He came along and there was a huge crowd and there were so many people that he was getting pushed further and further back towards the water. And he saw the boat, and it was Peter's boat. And he said, Peter, can I borrow your boat? Just take me out a wee bit. So they went out into the water a wee bit, and he could see all of the people, and he could speak to all of the people from the boat. And then what did he do? He said, Peter, come on, we'll go fishing. And Peter said, oh, we've been out all night, and we never caught anything. And she said, no, come on, we'll go fishing. So they went fishing. And they caught so many fish that they had to call their friends in another boat to come out and help them with the fish. And they were so worried that both boats were going to sink because of the number of fish. Well, I think this morning, when Peter saw all of these fish, he would have gone back to that moment when he saw Jesus for the first time. And Jesus, on that first occasion, said to him, Peter, you've been fishing for fish. Come on now, follow me, and we'll go fishing for people. And we'll make a difference to people. Come on and follow me, Peter. And here they are, Peter feeling miserable because he had let Jesus down, and Jesus is saying to him, Peter, come on. Come on and we'll go fishing for people. Come on, Peter. It's okay. And then he asks him three times. The first one, Jesus says, do you love me more than all of these other disciples? And Peter can't say yes. Do you know what he says? He doesn't even say, I love you. He says, I'm your friend. And so Jesus says, well, if that's too much for you. The second question was, Peter, do you love me? And Peter can't even answer that one. And he says, I'm your friend. So Jesus eventually, the third time, says to him, Peter, are you my friend? And Peter said, yes, I am. I'm your friend. Seems a bit silly to me to say to this fisherman, go and look after the sheep. He wasn't a shepherd. He was a fisherman. But what happened in those days was they just used pictures or images to help people to understand what was expected of them. And what, was, what Peter was being told was, go and help people. Go and look after them, encourage them, and be with them. Tell them about me and help them. Peter thought he had done something so bad that he could never be forgiven, and Jesus forgave him. Sometimes we get embarrassed to talk to God because we know that we've done things that we shouldn't have done, and we feel a bit guilty. Sometimes we don't speak about them because we feel a bit scared and that makes us feel guilty as well. But whatever age we are, whatever stage we are in life, whoever we are, whatever we've done, I want to say to you today that God loves you. God loves you more than you'll ever know. And he longs to forgive you. To get rid of any feeling of guilt and to say, come on and follow me. It's great. Come on and follow me. He said it to Peter, he said it to the disciples, and he still says it to us. Come on and follow me. It's really important 
that as we go through life, we have somebody, Jesus, to follow. Because he promised that he'll help us. He promised that he'll be with us. He promised good for us. One of the pictures that uh, we use of Jesus is the rock, but we also use the picture of an anchor. Because the anchor keeps you safe and secure. The BB hymn talks about having an anchor. And that anchor, I believe, is Jesus. So when we follow him, he also acts like an anchor, somebody that we can rely on, that we can trust and know that we're safe with him. Will your anchor hold?